it's okay to doubt, and 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 doubting is is uh, essential. It's mm -hmm. not it's not uh, a uh, an elective. You know, it's a it's a mandatory part of uh, of our a way of going, and we need to we need to have that in order to find certainty, in order to find faith. I'm sitting here with Michael Whitehill. <laughs> We're talking about doubt. And I'm sitting in Sister Aloysius's office, one of the characters in your play. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what the play's about and why sure. we're here to talk about sure. themes? The play takes place in uh, 1964 uh, in uh, St. Nicholas Catholic School. Sister Aloysius is the older nun who is the uh, kind of the principal of the school uh, who is deeply, deeply embedded in the doctrine. Uh, sister James, the younger sister, has just come into the uh, school, a uh, young teacher, very progressive, very uh, uh, willing to try out new teaching techniques, a very energetic uh, and thoughtful uh, and deeply religious uh, woman. Uh, Father uh, Flynn, who is the uh, pastor of the, of the church here, also younger and, and firmly believing uh, in, the, um, in the principles of the ecumenical uh, council, that, uh, that this, uh, this change is necessary, that the church, if it continues in this sort of uh, rigidity, is going to die and lose, uh, lose parishioners. And uh, in all of that process, uh, we, we have a natural conflict between two of the primary characters of the play. There is an uh, African-American child in, the, in this school who had just come to the school for the last six months of school. And uh, Mrs. Muller is the only other character that comes into the play divorced from any religious context. So what we find is that Mrs. Muller coming into this is basically trying to be co-opted by uh, Sister Aloysius to uh, get on her side against the priest, uh, contending, again, without evidence and, uh, and any kind of proof. So, uh, so what, what you'll, the audience will be able to see is that the sub-parables are adding up to a, and the allegories that are, that are brought up in the Father's uh, uh, two sermons and kind of in the watching how the play evolves itself, that there will be a moral meaning for everybody in this audience. What you're going to see in the play is as doubts grow, the faith fades, but the faith has to become strong, stronger through the doubts that they have about, uh, you know, about this one issue. Is this guy uh, molesting these kids? Mm -hmm. I know without a shadow of a doubt by working with you and by reading this play a couple of times myself, that when we have faith and doubt and we have you know, rumors and uncertainty that not only will the characters feel it, but every single person that's watching the show mm -hmm. is going to make that journey with the characters. And as an actor, the tricky part is if you're playing Father Flynn and you did it, mm -hmm. is a different way of going through this play than if you play, play Father Flynn as though you were completely innocent. Uh -huh. I don't want to know what it is, but has John Haas, who's playing the Father yeah. Flynn, made his decision yet? Uh, he's, he's on the fence. He's on the fence about it? Yeah. Which is cool, because yeah. he gets to yeah. play. And, and I think the more times we play it through, uh, we'll see uh, what actually tells this story. What actually tells the story of uh, a, um, a hardened uh, um, soul. This is the real deal. <laughs> You're real not messing deal. around. Yeah, we're not messing around <laughs> yeah. with this one. Because I wanted, as, as in all our sets here that, that, that I do, I like people to use the pieces uh, as as actors, yeah, you it's know, another character play. for them to play with. Let yep. them get in there and do what they need to do. Yeah, and naturally, I'm already putting my hands all over yeah. it. So well, yeah, the, it's the, what that's, you would do. Yeah, that's yeah. what you would do. So uh, yeah, and a lot of times actors are fearful of sets. They don't even touch a set. Mm -hmm. If a chair is in the way, they won't move it. Yeah, ah. yeah. <laughs> I keep walking around a chair that somebody put in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're not going for that kind of crap right. in this place. So yes. so the idea is is that you know when you have this sort of solidity. This is monumental. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is nine, ten feet tall. And it's, it's a monolithic representation of church anywhere, anytime, or meditative place, right. solid structure, yeah. uh, something that is not temporary or ephemeral. And this is always going to be here. The books in the, in the library will change with mm -hmm. the new principle. This will always be there. Yeah. And it's neat because no matter what you believe or how you think, when you see this, Mm -hmm. It makes you feel something, yeah, that, one way or another. There's an impact. Yeah, and this has th that. This needed to have that, that first, full frontal impact. Yeah, you just look at it and you go, I know where I am. There's probably one or two people out there that think like I do, and they're complete theater nerds that can appreciate <laughs> just the lighting. So yeah. coming to see your shows, yeah. I know with the Mice and Men and with yeah. this one, oh, like, the incredible. lighting you do yeah. is incredible. Yeah, we do a lot uh, with what we have to do with, and yeah. uh, for a small stage to put up uh, big plays. 
you know, that's part of the challenge. And the lighting is really uh, kind of crucial here because in the center part, as we, as we leave this, this garden mm -hmm. uh, grotto area, um, essentially uh, in the openings, only the, the, the pulpit only appears in two places uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in the two sermons that he delivers. Uh, which are important because one's an allegory and the other is a mini parable. Uh -huh. So uh, they're important to the audience, but he will actually be moving away from the pulpit and performing to individual audience members as though they are the congregation. So, if you, and you've read the play, you know yep. how, how when you want to capture somebody and you're looking at them uh, and, you're, and you're saying your words, you're saying your words to everybody, but somehow or other somebody out there always feels like he's zeroed in. Mean, <laughs> right. Like, what did I do now? I know so much thought goes into your mind, which is why I love talking to you about theater. I can sit up here and talk <laughs> to you about this show for the next five hours. Yeah. yeah. But at some point, we got to just let people come see this show, right? Amen. So yes, when, we when do we open up? Uh, we're going to be opening on September 8th. Uh, we run through the 24th. Uh, our shows, uh, our Friday and Saturday shows are at 8 o'clock, and our Sunday show is a matinee at 2 o'clock. There'll be a talk back after every performance, and I really encourage people that get a chance to see this to think a little bit about the themes we talked about, because they're going to be the reason you want to come to see this play. Right. And you want to see how, how a theme uh, or a parable uh, can be made meaningful by performance uh, in front of you. And, uh, and in some cases, you may want to find a wayward family member or someone who might, or a child, uh, you know, a teenager or someone who might get a message right. of, about this and drag them back for a second look. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we encourage that. <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely. Come, yeah. come every night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. come every night. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to drop maybe some reservation numbers right here. We'll right. put some dates and times right. up here. And so all of our folks can come out, they can challenge themselves mm -hmm. to find a little bit of doubt in themselves maybe, mm -hmm. find out what rumors, uncertainty, and faith and belief can right. really do for them.